is called a shoestring budget. <laughs> the reality is, is that unfortunately I seem to have lost my uh, Orbit Sphere camera and uh, it has a microphone with it and I was cleaning it and I think I got some cleaning agent on the microphone part. So <laughs> I'm either down a camera and maybe little Orbit Sphere, it stands on a little base, you know, it's kind of cute. But eventually I'll wind up replacing it, but for now, temporarily, it looks like we improvise, and that's one of the things that I've always been able to do overseas, underseas, in this house, wherever I'm at, whatever I'm doing, there's always some way that God brings through His way to accomplish any ways what He would have us to do. So in Spurgeon today, wait on the Lord. It may seem an easy thing to wait, but it is one of the postures which a Christian soldier learns not without years of teaching. Marching and quick marching are much easier to God's warriors than standing still. There are hours of perplexity when the most willing spirit, anxiously desirous to serve the Lord, knows not what part to take. Then what shall it do? Vex itself by despair? Fly back in cowardice? Turn to the right hand in fear? Or rush forward in presumption? No, but simply wait. Wait in prayer, however. Call upon God. Spread the case before Him. Tell Him your difficulty. Plead His promise of aid. Give Him your frustrations and let Him deal with them. In dilemmas between one duty and another, it is sweet to be humble as a child and wait with simplicity of soul upon the Lord. It is sure to be well with us when we feel and know our own folly and are heartily willing to be guided by the will of God. But wait in faith, knowing full well He will accomplish. Express your unstaggering confidence in Him. For, faithful, for unfaithful, untrusting waiting is but an insult to the Lord. Believe that if you keep your tarrying even till midnight yet, He will come at the right time. The vision shall come and not tarry. Wait in quiet patience, not rebelling because you are under the affliction, but blessing your God for it. Never murmur against the second cause, as the children of Israel did against Moses, and never wish you could go back to the world again, but accept the case as it is. You put it as it stands, simply, and with your whole heart, without any self-will, into the hand of your covenant God, saying, Now, Lord, not my will, but thy be done. I know not what to do. <laughs> I am brought to extremities, but I will wait upon you, and thou shalt cleave the floods or drive back my foes. I will wait if thou keep me many a day, for my heart is fixed upon thee alone. O God, and my spirit waits for thee in the full conviction that thou wilt yet be my joy and my salvation, my refuge, my strength, and my strong tower. And in silly circumstances, as well as in major, whether it be a microphone going out or whether it be <laughs> your house getting flooded or whatever the circumstance, God wants you to trust him if he says wait but also talk to him if he says that there is a time period for you to wait so do what you can as I have but at the same time wait for his accomplishing purposes to be done for you in you and with you because our God is faithful even if we are not when we fall down and fail he picks us up we can't pick ourselves up but he shall and he will always provide for us some way that we will learn from it and thank Him for being not only our Lord, but our God and our Savior. Because Jesus gave Himself for us, and we need but to trust Him with all of our heart, to not lean in our own understanding, in all our ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct our path. Even as He directed mine to this microphone. <laughs> and as we find, we will solve this issue <laughs> one way or another.